Good evening. Uh, let me try that again. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to an episode here of Arrogant Web TV. It's been a while since we've been on Facebook, but uh, today we absolutely have to be on Facebook because we are going to be taking apart an air gun. And we know how YouTube feels about touching any air guns. Oh my gosh, the world might end if you touch it on the live show. Anyway, we're going to be taking a look at the Rex P. Uh, the Rex P uh, comes in various calibers. We're going to be looking at a 50 caliber tonight. Uh, by the way, if you guys don't mind helping me out uh, and sharing this video, let it let your let your friends and your and your um, Facebook friends know that we've got this going on. That would really help because every time I try to do it, I just screw it up. So I need my wife here to do that for me. Anyway, we're going to be taking a look at the Rex P. The reason we're going to look at it that is that is probably one of the most popular air guns we have at, at Air Gun Pro Shop. And people want to modify it, change it, work on it and so forth. And we just have so many questions. So I thought tonight might be a great way for us to actually take one. And one of the biggest questions we get is how do you take, how do you swap the bottle? And uh, people, you may see somebody doing a video, they just unscrew it. And uh, there's more to it than just that. So. I want to walk you guys through the safe procedures of how to swap bottles, how to set up the bottles, because um, you can actually mess things up. And I don't you know, want you guys to get the most out of your air guns. So the first thing I'm going to do here, uh, by the way, uh, comments, if you guys have comments, you want to jump in here, please um, ask questions. I'll do the best I can to try and respond to questions while you guys are watching, but we're going to take a gun apart. Uh, I hope you guys are up for that. And um, forgive me if I fumble a little bit because this is live uh, and I'm trying to run multiple cameras and do everything here all on my own. So, hey, <laughs> let's get started. All right, let me grab our gear here. All right. <clears throat> what I've got here, by the way, uh, a little shout out to the Ransom Rest folks. Um, <clears throat> Ransom Rest was a sponsor. Uh, we had at Airgun Expo. They were new to me, not new to Airgun Angie. Um, Airgun Angie's got some really cool stuff from them, but they were certainly new to me. Uh, and they sent us not only some really cool rifle rests, which if you guys check out my videos, you will see their gear being used all the time. Um, but they also sent these really cool mats. So what I'm going to do now, and uh, you guys are going to look be looking downward at the desk. And I'm just going to walk through some stuff. So here we go. All right. So this is the gun we're working on. This is the Rex P. So uh, we're going to have some tools we're going to need here. And I've got the bottle. And I've got the pistol tank. Now, this air gun, first of all, uh, any of you guys on Facebook, oh, my gosh, he's handling a gun. This is an air gun, folks. Please, you know, um, don't get your knickers in a twist. Uh, this is an air gun. There's not, it is completely unloaded and we're on safe. We're going to be doing this very, very safely walking through these various uh, processes here. So please just relax. It's okay. Um, this configuration I call the last resort. So this, if you look here, imagine it was like that. Uh, that is, you know, that part and this, that's the Rex pistol. What I like to do personally, because it's far more accurate, easier to man manage and handle, I like to add the rifle tank to the pistol and that gives you this little cool micro carbine. So this uh, is much easier to work with as far as uh, being able to shoot accurately and manage and, man and you know, it just works a whole lot better uh, like this personally. But you need to be able to take the pistol tank off and add the rifle tank. Now at the pro shop, you can buy just the last resort. Um, not right now because we're out of stock, but we will be getting more stock in here shortly. Uh, probably in the next three to four weeks, we'll have a bunch more of these in, all primarily just going to be in 50 cal. Uh, all right, so the last resort is essentially like it's a pistol with the rifle stock. So let's put this back to uh, sort of as you would get the pistol. Now, if you look here, I'm going to have to take this off. Good, it's got a little nubbin I can get in there on. So this is our Hawk scope we like to put with these. Take this off here. Right, set that aside. Okay, so in the top of the rail, you're gonna have 
to um, Allen nuts. So in order to get the bottle on and off, and this is why this is important, you need to take these off. There's a set screw under here. So if you see somebody just grabbing this, I'm, oops, sorry, <laughs> the shroud moved. Unscrewing this, uh, that's because they've removed the set screw. Now you can do that, but it also can uh, create other problems, which I want to talk about that um, because I've had a lot of phone calls lately of people um, not being able to fill their gun or the gun leaking or whatever. And I can show you what's, what can cause that. So what we're going to do, we take these off. Um, I had a couple questions here. I apologize that I missed them. So Manuel, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be walking through basically how to set up the Rex, the, specifically here the Rex pistol, but um, this will work with any of the Rex products. I will say that that part of the Rex, okay, this part right here, that is the same on all the Rex guns. So the, the air tube might be different, the barrel might be different, but that receiver part, that's all the same stuff. So um, what you're learning today will translate to other things. Now, if you see right in here, we have a set screw. So let's grab that. I think that is going to be, it's too big. It's going to be two and a half. All right. So two and a half mil. Now just loosen that up. And now there we go. We can take tank off. Uh, one of the things that people have been asking about is how uh, you would send the tank in for service if you needed to. Um, you really shouldn't send these full of air. So back here in the back, there's this little guy right here. You guys can see that. That is your relief valve or your bleed valve. So if you unscrew this, it drains the tank. All right, so we'll set that down. Now, if you bought the Rex pistol, what you got is this All right now. Okay. okay, we are going to see, there's a little gap in here and this is where things can get tricky. You need a little bit of gap between the valve and the barrel. Without that, you can actually screw this in too far and actually slightly depress this valve. So if you run too low of air, when you go to fill it up, this valve is actually open. You can't actually fill the gun. So how do you get that little gap? Well, you can just sort of size it and you maybe like a width of paper. We're talking like a quarter mil, half a mil, but you get it just like that. And then there's where the set screw comes into play. Now, the other option, which is what I wanted to talk about tonight, is how do you make that gap where you can just screw the tank in and be happy with that without needing the set screw? So what we're going to do, first of all, we'll take the tank off because we don't need a charge tank on the gun when we're playing with it, okay? So we'll take this off. Okay, now what we're gonna do is go ahead and decock it. Now, the way you're gonna do that is hold the handle and you have to take it on, put it on fire, gently squeeze the trigger and then you can bring it down safely, okay? Just like that. All right, so. Next thing I'm gonna do here is we're gonna take the shroud off. So we take this off here. All right, there's our barrel. There's actually the little pistol. Now you've got a set screw right here and a set screw right here. If you loosen those, bigger. Is that four? No, it's not four. No. All right, this one, there it is. Oh, wrong one. If you loosen this here, and you loosen this here, you can actually adjust the position. Okay, roll this open. You can adjust, you can actually rotate the barrel. And now, okay, so if I rotate this one turn counterclockwise, now when I return this in, Come on, fight. Okay, now we can screw this all the way in. And we actually have our gap. 
So now we've maintained our gap without having to use a set screw. So now I can actually tighten this up, not have to put a set screw back in. I mean, we can, you know, leave it there if you want, but now we've actually got the proper, the proper gap without having to use the set screw. That means we can probably use our rifle barrel and also our carbon fiber barrel all interchangeably without having to take the rail off, which is kind of a pain in the butt. All right, so let's just check that, okay? So we're on safe. We're gonna go ahead and remove this bottle. We're gonna try the rifle just to make sure the threads are right. Okay, and here's our rifle tank. Um, a lot of people ask me, can you switch calibers? Yeah, if you had all the parts, you certainly can. Um, all right, so we've, we've got our little bit of a gap there. It's almost too much of a gap. But if we make that line up, it's going to hit the valve. So we don't want to do that. So a little bit of gap there is fine. All right, so we've got a tiny bit of gap between our valve and our barrel. And that prevents, when you're screwed all the way in, it prevents you from partially opening the valve, which is where a lot of folks have been running into problems where they shoot too many times, they run out of air, and then can't fill their gun. All right, so we're gonna take this off. Okay, that's good to go. Now let's go ahead and check our carbon fiber bottle. Okay, this one, I take the stock off. Now this one actually has a collar. So you can set it. So we're just going to go like this. Hey there, Angie. Okay, now see, I'm bottom right out against that. Now, the beautiful thing of this, though, is I can get it in a position I like, bring the collar into play, and then lock that in. Now I have my gap, and my bottle is secure because I have this locking nut. So by just adjusting our position of the barrel a little bit, um, this allowed us to maintain our gap. And now uh, we can go ahead and lock our barrel back down and put the gun back together. Okay, I'm gonna decock it. Okay. this off here. The other thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is to check your sear and your sear engagement and make sure all of that's working good. So we're going to walk through that here in just a minute. So this, I had to repair this bottle here recently. Um, and so it doesn't have the, the little tape on here that allows this to go on without spinning around. So I, I'll deal with that later. I'm going to go ahead and put this back as the um, rifle bottle. Now we can just unscrew this. Hey there, Gary. Hope everybody's doing well tonight. If you guys have questions, shout out at me, okay? Okay, so we'll put this back in here. Now, at least with our rifle tank and our pistol tank, we should be able to just screw it all the way in, bottom out there, and still have our gap which we do, we have a nice little gap there. That one's maybe about one mil, so it's kind of the outer edge of how far I'd like to see the gap, but uh, we're able to just lock that in without having to futz with the set screw. So now we can go ahead and put our rail back on. It's here, this, okay. Angie, go get them armadillos, have fun. If you guys, oh, I don't know if you guys know. I don't know if Angie, did you post your your little coyote kill? Um, I don't know if you did or not, but um, Angie got herself a little coyote that's been in there getting her chickens. That was kind of a cool thing. All right, now we can go ahead and put, oh, there it is, the shroud. Back. All right, so you have you have posted the picture. So you guys could take a look at Angie uh, in her pest abatement role, taking out those pesky little uh, critters that want to get her chickens. Um, another little quick thing, if you guys 
uh, have the rifle and this gets really loose and it doesn't want to stay put on you, uh, all you got to do is grab your Allen key, tighten this just a teeny bit. All right, not so much you break it. And then it'll go on more snug. So, you know, hold better for you. All right, so now we're all set. If I want to go from this to the pistol, the tank, I don't need to take this off again. The set screw I don't have to mess with. And we're all set to just swap out to our tank. And same thing, if I want to go up to the carbon fiber bottle, I can actually go right to this and be in good shape. So all of this is very, very cool. So there you go. All right, so let's see here. This here. All right, so I'll put my tools back. All right, so the next thing we want to take a look at is how do you deal with, say, checking your sear engagement or setting the trigger or something like that. First of all, uh, anytime you're going to do any, any sort of trigger work, let me switch cameras just for a minute. Um, let me just look you in the face, so to speak, here. All right, so anytime you guys are going to do any sort of trigger work, um, I'm going to recommend that if you don't know what you're doing, you find somebody that does because Boy, you can very, very easily in, uh, um, what's the right word, uh, uh, unintentionally uh, take something out of spec and create yourself some problems. So uh, this is not something I would recommend you do um, without having uh, you know, professional assistance if, if you don't know what you're doing. Okay, so on these guns, first of all, what we're gonna do is take the tank off because we don't need to have a pressurized tank. It is nice not having to go back and forth now uh, on these things. Let's see here. Let me switch cameras back to our down view. Okay, so now here we are. We're gonna take a look under the hood here and just take these components apart. I wish to show you guys how easy that is to do. Now I have a couple tools you're gonna need specifically for the sear adjustment. Um, this is a set of tools I got um, on uh, Amazon. Uh, you guys can just see those there. If you notice, I think it'll show you. It goes down to 0.7, which is tiny. Um, you're going to need a 0.9 millimeter to get that screw out. There's a teeny tiny screw, which is your sear adjustment right there. That little guy right in there is what you got to get out with the point 0.9. Now, most of your tools that you get at any normal hardware store all come with, um, you know, 1.5, but they don't come with a point 0.9. Um, the other thing I get is this little kit right here. This is a kit I get at Harbor Freight. It's like five or six bucks. Um, and that actually has a point 0.7 and point 0.9 in it with a little screwdriver. So I'm going to use that tonight because... That is what I normally would use for such things. And that's already set up. Okay, so before we get to that, let's go ahead and take these plates off. Now the plates are going to be, I think a two millimeter and there's two plates. There's also some springs and some uh, little ball bearings in here. So guess what? Don't lose them. And that's where the ransom rest, or the, excuse me, the ransom uh, accessories, this mat, for example, comes in real handy. Um, because things won't roll around on you, which is awesome. They're sort of kept in these little grooves. The other thing that's really nice is by having uh, different, these little spaces here, you're able to actually keep your parts uh, where you're sort of where you know where they go. Um, that is really helpful. All right, so we've got one plate off. Go ahead and take the other plate off here. Um, I think I'm gonna probably do some other teardown videos as well. Um, they, I know that people, really want me to go through, excuse me, and talk about how to do like a Marauder rebuild. So I will probably need to do that at the shop, but if that's something you guys would like to see, let me know and I'm happy to do it. Um, okay, so in here, and I hope you guys can see some of that. Uh, there it is. Um, let me see if I can zoom in like that. Okay, um, all right, so we've got a spring, which is our sear spring. 
We've got our spring here, which is uh, provides tension on the trigger. Um, and I do believe, yeah, we're uncocked or decocked. All right. So that's all clear. Um, and your, here's your safety. And the safety is where under here, there's a little ball and a little spring. So we're going to be really careful with that. We're going to want to take this trigger out. We're going to want to take the sear out because we want to check it to make sure there's no wear. Um, so the first thing we got to do is we are going to remove this screw right here. And this screw here is what sets your sear engagement, which is really your only adjustment you have on this as far as your trigger. So we're going to carefully pull that out. And that's what we got there. All right, there's the screw. Now we can dig this spring out. All right. Um, now we basically, other than this little screw here, which is, I believe, going to be, is it a one and a half? I think it is. Yeah, a one and a half mil. Uh, this is sort of like a, I wish I knew the right term for that. This prevents over travel of the trigger. So that's what that does here. So we're going to take that out. All right, be stubborn. There it is. Okay. Okay, okay. I have rebuilt a ton of these guns. So many. All right. So right here is why you have the mat. So on the back side, there's a little spring that rides in here that provides the tension to your trigger. It just fell out. So if you don't have a mat or a terry cloth or some sort of surface that catches things, uh, that would have been lost. And then you'd be in a place where you wouldn't have a gun to use anymore, which is, that's absolutely no fun. All right, so uh, you have a pin here. that just pushes right through, as you see there. And now the trigger can just come out, okay? And so can the sear. And we're gonna cock this to there. Okay, and we can actually now just pull the sear out. Okay, now without the sear in there, the gun, oh, it's got this little stop here. Without the sear in there, the, there's nothing to hold the hammer. So we're gonna leave that with this little brace here to hold this open for us. Okay, now we still have our safety, which at this point, if you don't take that out, you're fine. But if you needed to, this does pop out and there's that little ball detent and spring under here. So maybe we're just gonna leave that right there, but that would just pull free. If you wanted to check that, maybe it gets gummed up or you wanna clean it or lube it or whatever. Um, you've got these little, these little ridges here, which is what that ball inside the safety is riding on to kind of give you that little positive stop. So I'm not gonna pull that out because it's a pain in the butt if you lose those parts, no fun at all. Okay, so on the sear, um, the hammer is resting right here on this sear. And what you want to do, I should say it's resting right here. You want to check this for any wear, um, any issues with it. Uh, like if your trigger gets real hard or something and it's not pulling like you're used to, then you can take this out and just check this, this component here. Um, these are new, the new sears that are coming in the guns. They're far more rugged uh, and they hold up for like a very, very long time. So they're not like some of the very early, early models may have been a little bit softer and you wanted to check it regularly, but really these are angled properly. They're clean properly. There's no rough spots. So the pull on this, uh, as far as these guns is so much better than it used to be. Um, if you wanted to further, you know, take this down, sometimes this cocking lever here uh, will break and that's because people pull it too hard or too aggressively. The way he would get it out is you actually have to line up a pin right there, pop the pin out, and then you replace the cocking arm and set that pin back. That's how you do that. Easiest way to do that though, is if we pull this off, right, we'll pull this off, and now we're gonna have to take the rail off again. So we're gonna go down another level here of the gun shut this here. Okay. <clears throat> See you, Angie. Have a good, uh, successful hunt. So I'm going to expand this window out just a little bit. 
like that. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> if I wanted to get inside here, check the hammer sprig and all that other stuff, what I need to be able to do is take this little collar off here. And we have a set screw right there. So in order to get that out, I think it's a bigger three mil. Yep. Okay. Okay. So we're going to leave our barrel position set and we're just going to hopefully this will come loose. There it is. Okay. Now, if you, I don't know if you guys can hear that. Let me just put it here. Okay. You are under tension here. Okay. So um, really maybe the best way to do this, let me expand this up. This is just keep pressure down on it. Always don't have it pointing at you. Okay, there it is. So there's your hammer spring and the, the full length of the barrel, which is kind of cool to see. So there's the barrel of the pistol, right? And your hammer is actually now inside here. All right, so there's your hammer is actually on the inside right there, okay? Um, so this cocking linkage, uh, if you pull on it too hard, oh boy, about lost my, uh, <laughs> about lost my safety there. Okay, if you pull on this too hard, um, you can break this linkage. So it, you don't have to pull on this hard, just pull it till it clicks. Um, but you would push the pin out here, which would let you free this linkage and that's how, that's how you replace it. All right, so this you can also check since we got this out. So your sear is gonna catch on these little, these little bits here, right? I forget which way it's going to go, but it's going to catch on these little bits. And as you pull this down, that's what allows the, you know, that's what allows the, the hammer to fly forward. Um, I'm not quite sure which way that went, but we're going to just put this back to, together now. Okay. okay. So you want that lined up with the grooves here be down to catch the sear. You can sort of see right in there. I don't know if you can see that sliding back in right here. Okay, but right there, All right? So you know you're in the right spot. Go ahead and shut this. Now we're gonna put this back in. Again, you're under tension. So uh, maybe put the gun down like this and then just get it started. All right. All right, and once you've bottomed out, just check your position, you're good to go there. Um, and then let's go ahead and reset set our set screw here. Okay, so that's there. Now we're gonna rebuild this part and we're gonna start by putting back our sear. Um, the sear sits in there like this. You guys can see it goes just like this. Uh, it's hard to see. Um, we're going to hold this open just so that it catches on this little nubbin. And then we should be able to just sneak this in and have it drop into place for us. There it is. So now it's back into place here. And the first thing we're going to need to do uh, is go ahead and get our trigger replaced. Uh, we'll get all the other bits and pieces put into place here in a second. But the trigger goes like this. You see it rides on that part. So when you pull the trigger, it actually is lifting that sear. Uh, we're going to drop our pin in. So that's back into place here. We'll just line these up. You do all of this with it not having any tension. It's a lot easier. Okay. So that's basically there. Um, now let's go ahead and replace our... Um, our spring for our sear. So this, the spring is kind of cone shaped. If you guys can see that, zoom in. Okay, so it's tapered. So small end and big end. It goes the small end towards the sear and the big end up towards the top. So if you guys can see that, Hard to see it. Uh, but, uh, now we're going to take the screw we removed, and this is again the 0.9, and we're going to put this in there. We're just going to get it started. We're not going to set anything yet. We're just going to get that where 
we're screwing in the careful not to strip it. There it is. Okay, now as you turn, it actually begins to lift the sear right there. And this, what this does is it changes the sear engagement. So uh, this is really hard, I know, for you guys to see here. Um, but there's a little space in here. And if I reduce this or I go counterclockwise with this, I'm going to drop this down now here. Okay. If I go counterclockwise, okay, that sear drops down. Sear drops down. If I go clockwise, it raises the sear. As you can see, that gap is increasing. Let's see if I can show you what this looks like, guys. Okay, so you can see the sear raising, and then you can see the sear lowering. Okay, so as you change that sear engagement, that is what provides, well, as I said, this that's what's hanging the hammer. So you if you over-adjust that, that's where you get yourself into problems. So you're best off... Um, providing as much sear engagement as you can, uh, and then uh, slowly sort of working your way back. When you get where it's relatively light, add more sear engagement back, just maybe half a turn, so that you always have plenty of sear engagement. It's way better to be safe um, than have too light of a trigger. Uh, all right, now on this side, we need to put our um, over travel screw back. So we'll grab our uh, one and a half mil, and our little oopsies, our over travel screw here. All right, it goes in like this. Now we're locked in. Double check our safety is still working good. It is. Um, go over this side. Now remember that spring that fell out. That's this guy right here, and that just slides right in there. All right, so we are basically almost back together now. Take our plate. And it goes that way. We grab our Allen screws. Let's get those right back together. What? Where's that one? Okay. Now on this side, I'm going to go ahead and replace our this this plate. Now this one actually has the fire and safe markings on the plate. You line those up for your safety and replace your screws. So as you guys can see, this gun is very very simple to work on. Um, it is. It is very, very simple. Now, before we're done, we are going to need to set the trigger. So we'll do that here in just a minute. First of all, we can go ahead and cock it. And holding onto the handle, um, we can go ahead and see our sear engagement. As much as I love that automatic safety in this exercise, it could be a little pain. It's actually good uh, where I have it right now. I'm not going to change it. It's actually fine. But if you needed a little more sear engagement for safety, um, I would do half turns here um, clockwise for more, counterclockwise for less, less. And again, the tool you're using is a point, uh, point 0.9 millimeter uh, for that tiny little um, Allen screw there. So we'll go ahead and put the shroud back on. And we will put our rail back on. All right. Now you get to decide which bottle you want to run. I like the layout with just the rifle bottle. Um, and I have some cool news to talk about here. Uh, and just as I get this mounted, come on, there we go. Right, 
So we are good to go. We've got our gap here, which is just enough of a gap. We can go ahead and decock this. And there we are. So now we are back up and running in our last resort configuration, which is my absolute favorite. Put our scope back on and we're back in business. Okay, so what's the cool news I wanted to talk about? Let me tell you. Okay, so we've got our last resort. Let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay, so we've got our last resort. Very cool gun. Um, the previous output of the Rex 50 Cal was, I don't know, I think in this configuration was maybe 180 foot pounds, give or take. And that's with a 336 grain slug. The new valve, and I'm, I'm not talking about the pistol, I'm talking about the, with the rifle tank. The new valve, and if you notice here, you see how that's silver? If you have a Rex product and this is blued, you have the old valve. The silver ones that we have now, these are the new valves. They're producing probably 20, 15 to 20% more power. All you got to do is swap the tank. That's it. So these guys right here, um, the pistol's getting more energy. And I'm going to do some testing on that. I haven't done that yet. I have done testing with this. We went from 186 to like 220. So 220 foot pounds out of that. This configuration shooting the 100 supply 336s. When we went to the bottle, this gave me 240 foot pounds. So this guy with the new valve makes all the difference in the world when it comes to just raw output power. Um, and really all you need to do is swap the bottle. If for some reason you have a really old gun and the hammer is slightly smaller than the valve will allow, maybe the valve won't go into it all the way. Um, we have a, we have new hammers at Airgun Pro Shop. You just gotta let us know and we'll, we can get you hooked up with the right hammer. Guys, that's basically it. I know there's so many people wanted to know about how to make these minor adjustments or take the gun apart or put it back together. Um, so a couple really quick things to know. On all of the Evanex guns, there always is a bleeder. So if you need to return something for repair or you need to just want to be safe and degas it before working on the tank or something, unscrew that and it, all the air comes out. And that, they, I mean, all the bottles have it, whether it's the carbon fiber or it's the little bottle or the tank. Right here, you, when you see that, you'll have it. And on their, like their PCP guns, like the Sniper and their other guns, they actually have that bleeder built into the gun somewhere. So you don't have to just multi-shoot it to get it to go down. You can actually just bleed it off and you're safe to go. Um, but uh, that's an important thing. The head spacing, when you are returning your, or swapping tanks, make sure you've got, or you guys can't see it. <laughs> Let me switch back over. This little head space, this little gap right there. Make sure you've got that gap so that when you screw your bottle in flush, you're not depressing the valve at all because that causes people so many issues um, because that, that gap isn't there and they're kind of closing the valve. They're putting pressure on the valve. So when you run out of air, it doesn't know how to, um, you, can, you actually can't fill it because it just blows right off the barrel. Um, I guess that's it. I didn't know if you guys had any other questions or about, you know, anything else you want to talk about tonight. Uh, if not, we can kind of make it a shortish night. I appreciate you guys coming up here. We will be, you know, publishing this out and putting it out on our YouTube channel. So um, if for some reason you came along late or you're seeing this and say, oh gosh, I missed it uh, or whatever, we will have it uh, on our Ergon Web TV um, YouTube channel. So you guys can always go catch it up over there. And we will do, we always convert these to podcasts too. So if you are interested in just listening to Ergon stuff, um, all of our live shows, at least the Ergon Web TV shows are converted into podcasts. You guys can hop in there and enjoy them. So that's it for me now, unless you guys have questions or uh, anything um, you guys want to talk about tonight. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. And uh, I got some work to do. I have a bunch of articles to write for Air Gun Depot. So I'm going to go jump into that. Um, if not, that'll be it. Um, oh, Gary's. Yes, Gary. The Air Venturi's. Oh, uh, you know what? Let me say this. I didn't check them today. So I will know tomorrow if they're still holding air. Um, Gary, did you want a 22 or 25? I have one 22 left. <clears throat> and I, I didn't know if you were looking for 22 or 25. So let me know. Um, and then 
I've got to get the 25s up. Now I am going to do a series because I promised people on looking at the Avenger versus the Gauntlet 2. So I am going to take one of my 25s and turn that into a video with, um, with the Gauntlet 2. All right. So yeah, I thought you wanted a 22. Um, it's got your name on it, buddy. So uh, whenever you're ready, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, just send you an invoice if you want to go that route that way. It's just earmarked for you. And then I believe the other uh, other one I had come in is already spoken for as well. So they may not even make it to the site before they're gone. Um, but we do have the, a couple of the Woodstocks and uh, Woodstock Avengers in, in, in stock. But I hope to hopefully we'll be able to go down there and check that out. We we finally got here at the ranch. We haven't had like any significant rain in over a year. And so we just got uh, this whole week supposed to rain and it was beautiful today and the weather's broken. And I know some of you guys out there are sweating bad. Uh, we were doing that last week, 110, 112. We even hit 118 one day. So it was hot. Uh, but the man, the weather broke and we've got rain and today it may have hit 74 degrees and it's pretty awesome. So I'm enjoying the nice cool weather, uh, but it has been raining. So it hasn't been kind of not conducive to go down and spend much time at the ranch, but I will go down and take a look. Cause I know uh, not only you Gary are interested in those Woodstock Avengers, but I have other customers too that want them. Um, as far as the last resorts and the Rex P's, this is again, by far the most popular gun that we have at the pro shop right now. Um, we're out of stock, but we will be getting more in shortly. So probably I'm saying three to four weeks, we'll have more inventory. Not only of the gun, but we're also out of the carbon fiber bottles too. So um, we're getting a bunch of bottles and we're getting a bunch of the Rex P's. So, um, and we can make last resorts. We have tanks, plenty of tanks in stock. If you guys have a Rex pistol and you want to upgrade it, uh, with a new, uh, either a new pistol tank or a new rifle tank, we have those in stock. I have to add the pistol tanks to the website. I haven't done that yet, but if you or just ask, as I can just send you a custom invoice if you're looking for one. Um, but anyway, that's going to be it for tonight. If you guys have any questions for me, you can always reach me at Ergun Pro Shop. Um, it's just ergunproshop.com. You can also email me directly at editor at ergunweb.com. So that's it, guys. That's it for me tonight. Uh, and thank you guys for hanging out with me and let me show you guys how to take this apart and put it back together. If you have any questions, reach out. Happy to help. See you guys. Have a great night.